Straight to business news now on the programme, and Brian Quinn is joining us here on set. Brian, you've got the latest, haven't you, in a, a long-running legal battle. This is between uh, aircraft giants Boeing and Airbus. That's right, sir. It's been going on for quite a while between these two. A lot of complaints back and forth. Well, the United States is considering new tariffs now on $11 billion worth of European goods. This in response to EU subsidies that support Airbus. Well, the World Trade Organization has ruled those subsidies are illegal. The Trump administration now threatening import duties on European aircraft and cheese, among other products. The WTO's decision comes just weeks after it said U.S. tax breaks for Boeing also amounted to illegal subsidies. Washington and Brussels have been accusing each other of illegally supporting their domestic aircraft industries for 14 years now. If the U.S. does impose tariffs, it will mark a significant escalation of some already tense trade relations. Well, next, Carlos Ghosn has released a video interview accusing Nissan executives of, quote, backstabbing and playing a very dirty game. Lawyers for the former chief of the Renault-Nissan alliance played the video for journalists Tuesday as Ghosn remains in detention, re-arrested last week on new allegations of financial misconduct. Ghosn has already spent over 110 days locked up amid multiple rearrests. A family lawyer says he's being held hostage to force a confession. In the video, Ghosn says his downfall was engineered by Nissan executives to head off a merger between the company and French partner Renault. This is a conspiracy. This is not about specific events. This is not about, again, greed. This is not about dictatorship. This is about a plot. This is about conspiracies. This is about backstabbing. That's what we're talking about. And why? So you can say, why, why this happened? Why it happened? Because there, there was first a fear that the next step of the alliance in terms of convergence and in terms of moving toward the merger would in a certain way threaten some people or eventually threaten the autonomy of Nissan. Turning now to the markets, European indexes opening in the red amid investor concern over Brexit and a likely disappointing U.S. corporate earnings season. London FTSE 100 down just over a quarter percent. The Cat Caron here in Paris down over a third of a percent as Airbus shares drop 1.6 percent on the open on that U.S. tariff news. The Frankfurt DAX down just under two tenths of a percent at the open. Asian indexes mostly gaining Tuesday. Industrial automation giant Fanuc up 2% in Japan. The Tokyo Nikkei closing up just under two tenths of a percent. Chinese giant Tencent making some gains in Hong Kong. It's ending the day up around two tenths of a percent as well. Shanghai just barely in the red. The Kospi in Seoul ending the day up just over a tenth of a percent. Turning now to Sub-Saharan Africa, the World Bank has downgraded its predictions for economic growth there to 2.8% for 2019 instead of the previous 3.3% expected. At issue, falling prices on raw materials. Since 2015, the trend has put an end to nearly a decade of rapid growth. Other factors at work as well, including the U.S.-China trade war. Peter O'Brien and Bilal Tarbe report. Fog lingers over Lagos as the economy fails to lift. In sub-Saharan Africa, growth last year was weaker than expected. This year, it's the same story, with a revised growth forecast of only 2.8%. GDP is increasing at a slower rate than that of the population for the fourth year running. This slower than expected growth comes from both domestic and global factors. Globally, a volatile economic and financial environment you know, which is also characterized by rising trade tension, but also recovering but uncertain commodity prices. Three countries together make up more than half the region's economic output, but various challenges have stunted their contribution. In Nigeria, growth remains below 2%. Investors remain cautious about South Africa, which has recently come out of recession, and Angola's economy continues to shrink. Meanwhile, the World Bank says high inflation and large debt burdens are damaging the prospects of other countries. Poorly managed debt, fiscal deficits that are rising, and inflation that is still crippling in a number of countries are taking a toll on African economies. The World Bank pointed out, however, that countries that don't depend on commodities are growing strongly. The entire region could benefit if it can harness information technology effectively. 
Finally for business, more regulation for social media giants. On Monday, the UK presented new online safety laws that would slap penalties on tech firms that fail to protect their users from harmful content. Prime Minister Theresa May said social media companies hadn't done enough to protect users, and she wanted them to have a legal duty of care. The government also said it would look into making social media executives personally liable for any harmful content published on their platform. It's been a, a decent slew of that, you might say, in recent days, Stuart. Harmful content. It certainly has. See if we can put a cap on it. Thank you very much, Brian. Brian Quinn uh, with the business news on France 24.